Hey guys, it's Burnt TNT Freak here, and welcome to Vaults Tutorials, I think I'll call this. Uh, today, uh, I am building, or oh, not building, but showing you the fission reactor. Now, I will just very quickly turn down some of my video settings. Okay, there should be better, but it's not for me. I don't know how this video will turn out. I can also create another one if this isn't too good quality. Right, so basically this is a fission reactor, and obviously in vaults, uh, power is always needed. And you can always get the, you know, the uh, the good old, uh, you know, uh, you know, um, I've for completely forgotten the word. Uh, y you know, I mean, um, environmentally friendly things like solar panels and stuff and wind turbines. And they're noisy and they don't create very much, um, basically, very much power. So, you can always create the, the horrible, disgusting environment killer stuff. Basically this, the fission reactor. Uh, this, for now I'll do the fission reactor today and other episodes I will show, be showing basically the, uh, uh, the fusion reactor particle accelerator and hopefully if I can figure out how it works properly, the breeder reactor. Um, I don't really know how they work but I'll find out uh, soon. So this is the fish, like, uh, a fully working fission reactor. I built a couple now so I, I know this should work. So I will show how to probably build it from scratch in a few seconds, but first of all I'll show you that it's not, I'm not cheating. So these are empty empty energy cubes. Now I frequently, I use these universal cable things and uh, energy cubes instead of using uh, battery boxes and cables because I don't think they're very good at storing energy and these are better. And also these don't sit on fire, these wires, and they're very cheap to make as well, these wires as well. These are a lot better than other wires. So for things to go over, because um, you can always watch this video whenever you've uh, 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 built it. Uh, so basically, I'd say a good warning temperature is uh, 1,830. <clears throat> now, warning temperature means that once it heats up to that much, it'll send a redstone pulse out to this and put the control rod in, which is in there, which you can't see in there and that will turn it off and it'll just keep doing that off and on so it'll be noisy because the piston will be just doing this all the time uh, not the, f the switch obviously won't be going but it'll be just going off and on and stuff uh, but you're going to be getting high amounts of power now it does explode at 2000 Kish, that's the bit you're wondering it explodes at 2000 degrees so anything up to there you probably should turn it off now I'm going to put it in to see what happens because I've been talking about it a lot now so as you can see uh, the block actually changes and shows you what's in it now you can shift right click and it takes you to the inside I'm talking very fast here. Apologies. So this first off your rod has a life, and it will go down very slowly. Though, don't worry. About I'd say real life time, 10 to 15 minutes. It'll be about halfway. <clears throat> so as you can see, it heats up very, very quickly, and the toxicity also, you know, uh, is very bad. Oh, I took it out. Pardon me. Pardon me. Um, so as you see, the toxicity is always getting pretty high. That's why I'm wearing the hazmat suit. Make sure you have one of these, or you can pretty much get radiation all the time. Stop taking it out, Ben. Stop taking it out. Okay, sorry. Keep right clicking. Okay, so uh, once this gets to the temperature that I've put it at, uh, it'll push it out. So I'll wait till it gets to that temperature. Just very quickly, whilst it's getting there, uh, as you can see, these turbines are spinning slowly, and they are producing power. As you can see, not very much as of yet, but once it gets to full speed, it will. A few other things whilst it's still going. Uh, I'd use concrete to surround it in, unless you're building it in into the ground. I would use concrete. I su highly suggest concrete. It's very blast resistant. <coughs> um, even reinforced concrete would be even better, because when these things do explode, they do cause a bit of you know devastation. I can't, I can't exactly. Um, you know, get one to 2000 easily because it did take a while to get to 2000. Uh, but you know, uh, <clears throat> if I accidentally break it and it does it, I will show the devastation. Um, so, as I can hear, it's getting faster. These are very noisy, these as well. As you can see, these are actually spinning properly now. Uh, not so, still not as fast as they would be if they're at 8000. But as you can see, the power is getting up faster and faster and faster the faster this thing gets. Now, these things are very clever. Uh, I love this mod. This whole atomic science mod is very interesting. I know the whole ins and outs of it, apart from these two things here. I don't know what they are. And these. I don't know. But everything else I'm cool with. 
Uh, so it go. It slowly rises once it gets to about 1,850. So it still goes, but very slowly. That's why I can easily give you a explosion. So it's almost 8,030 now. So I shall see. Hopefully, there you go. So as you can see, everything that pushes the piston out, it brings it down to 1,830, and then let's go. So you're still producing power. And as you can see, we're producing a lot now. We're producing like, you know, you know, I don't know how many we're producing per second, but we're producing a lot. And if you say, let's just say, in the case of emergency, you know it's going to blow up, and this isn't working properly, or something, or it's bugged out, because you've updated it or something. All you're going to do is you're going to run to us, leave, which I suggest you get, fuck it. And I'll put the controller out properly, and it'll, the temperature will slowly go down. But that will waste your fuel, or to take your fuel out as well. So, um, I'll turn this off because it's very noisy. And now I'll show you how to build one properly. Okay, I'll try not to build it too far away. For the one, because I want to do some tests on that one after I've been this video. So the first thing I would do is plant on your fission reactor, but you don't have to if you don't want to. But that's what I tend to do now. I didn't used to before. Um, but it's very simple what you do when you build it. So also you can basically put this on as well. Put the thermometer next to it. If it's not next to it, it's not going to work properly. So it has to be like this next to it, or it's not going to work. So, now you're going to build the framework of it. So, obviously, as I said, you can use concrete. I'll just use normal concrete for this tutorial. And you build that. So, this is the first wall, as you can see there. That block's sticking out there. It doesn't have to be there. Um, as you can see, this is where you can change your temperature and run your redstone signal, which I should get some redstone out. will probably help. <coughs> okay. So, you can run redstone out, just to remind you. Okay. Stupid night time. Okay. There, now, you can build the other walls. So, basically, you build it like you're bu building a uh, basically build it three by three, leaving nine bit three by three in the middle, like this. I didn't, I didn't explain that properly. And then you can build along like this, two, only two blocks high needs to be. Right now, this is where this block comes handy for me. Uh, basically, why now you've built it, you want to get inside of it. Don't worry, it's not going to be very really active when you first build it. And from this angle. Now, it doesn't matter which side you do this on, but I tend to do it the same way every time, so I don't forget. You want to break this block here, the top one, and the bottom one here. So this bottom one here I'll start with first. You're going to want to place a sticky piston here, and a control rod here. If you put the control rod here, it's not going to work, and it will, your fish rate will never p turn on properly, because obviously the uh, you've, got the, you've got it on the off position, basically, all the time. And that's no good, really, if you want it to work, right? So now that that's like properly done, you want to connect up the piston to it, uh, to the temperature box. I don't know what to call that, a temperature block, I guess. And before you do anything else, I just think you should change the temperature now. Um, I'll put it on um, eight thousand thirty. In fact, you know what? No, no, no. I will uh, leave it on. Oh no! I'll leave it on 2,000, and I'll see if I can blow it up. Um. So I've built place that up. It's that. Okay. This here is a cru a crucial part of it. Otherwise, you're still not going to get it to work. So what I need to do is you need to go into. Um. You, you just have to get a sign. Uh. A sign or a door maybe would work. You could just put a wooden door, so you could destroy this block and put a wooden door. But a sign's better because it's more, just looks gooder, gooder, and better. You can tell I'm English. You don't have to write anything. Sometimes I just put like "Don't destroy" on in case I'm playing with you and wink, wink. And uh, and basically, that obviously water can't run through signs in Minecraft. So this is where you're going to put in your fuel rods. Now, now you can fill it with water. The bit everybody. Hate slash likes to. Sorry, I was, oh, sorry, I was um, doing my recording. My voice is breaking up today as well. As you can probably notice. Right, so easiest way to do this is you're going to need a couple of buckets of water. So you put one here and one here, which creates the infinite water source in the middle. And you put one, basically, you put them in all the corners, and that makes your first layer. Then again, the top layer. And there it creates still water, is I think the only thing that works. So you've got your still water. And there you go. That's what's going to be heated up when you turn, when you put your thing into the reactor. So I can put away that. 
final thing so building the actual thing itself is your um, uh, turbines sorry I forgot what they're called so you can put a block or you can use another turbine and you want to have them suspended over it and you want to put nine of them there like that now you can have them like this separate like this however I'm not sh I, I just think they make they, I'm pretty sure they make the same amount of power so you got to get a wrench and you got to wrench the middle so it turns into a big one like this so there you go, they've built the basic framework of the fission reactor. It's ready to start producing all of its power. What I forgot here, however, is a lever. And you can make... This is just basic. You can probably redesign this and make it a lot easier. You can have the control come from any any angle, from the side or from underneath. Underneath is probably a bit harder, depending on where you, which level you build it at. But yeah. Okay. So, now I will build quickly build the power thing. So... You're going to want to get your cables and an empty box if you're uncreative in building this. And build this. Pardon me for doing this on film. I just, it, for now, when I press F8 to pause my bandy cam recording, as you know, when you press F8 in old Minecraft, it uh, makes you go into the stupid panoramic view thing. So, it's ready to start producing power. And now you can just get your little fuel rod out and pop it in. Where's the fuel rod? There we go. Pop your little fuel rod in, and you'll notice straight away that the temperature starts to rise. Now, the fuel rods, I will tell you how to craft those now. So, I'll let that go up. It'll probably hit an explosion if it blows up, which I'm hoping to, because I've never actually exploded in my life before. So, it's all you need to make the uranium for uh, your fission reactors. Now, these are very expensive part pieces of machinery. Let me just get them all out so I can press the recipe button on them. First one is centrifuge. And that requires two motors, bronze, steel, and an advanced circuit, which requires a diamond. So you're going to need a diamond. For centrifuge, the nuclear boiler, you're going to need... Not... The nuclear boiler isn't too... I'm not sure how it works. Isn't too, you know, expensive, apart from this, which needs these wires, which needs wool. But, oh, yeah. And then the chemical extractor needs an elite circuit, which needs two advanced. So you're going to need two diamonds, basically, for that, and the motors. And you set them up in this order here. This or the order of them is pretty crucial apart from this first one. So um basically um the chemical extractor you get out uranium, as I've got some here, I'll just use sixteen, and you stick that in here. And what it'll do is it'll spin around with its cool. It'll spin around and as you can see this it's a bit like a bit like smelting it, you can't just smelt it in a furnace if you're wondering. And what it'll do is it'll turn it into this stuff called, when it does it, yellow cake. And it'll make three from one block, which is very uh, good, very, you know, resourceful. And you've got to put that in manually to the nuclear boiler in this slot here. And that will make it into into uh, uranium hexafluoride. I just can't remember what that was. And this uranium hexafluoride will automatically put pipe put itself into the centrifuge or oh, it should do anyway there you go put itself in and then the centrifuge is slow and it'll slowly make that into the enriched uranium now that's the process of doing it so if it was a bit too fast it was like another tutorial these two machines the boiler and the extractor both need water in piping into them or you can use water veils, um, these things, or cells as they're called. And you put them into this bit here, or you can use the piping pump system of uh, volts from the mechanism mod. And a pump. And I use, I'm just using infinite batteries by the way for this. And it'll pipe it in whenever it's needed, and you can just put in a battery, or you can ha ha wire up a little solar generator to that. So I'm not going to wait for this to do it, I've already got some pre-made, some enriched uranium. You know, you need three for the fuel rod, three enriched uranium for the fuel rod, and six uh, empty cells, which you can craft from tin and glass. Uh, recipe is... there you go, that's the recipe. Now, just that makes 16, so you, you're doing well, basically. <clears throat> so the recipe for this is three in the middle, and through the side there, through the side there, mix a fissile fuel rod. So there you have it, that's how you make a fissile fuel rod, and that's how you put the machinery for one. Now this thing is at 1850. 
Um, as you can see, it does stay pretty stable at this temperature, but it will increase. Uh, if I right click, the temperature is rising rapidly now on the inside of the reactor, not on the outside though. So as you can see, it's getting. It's, if once it gets to 2,000, it's going to explode. I hope. Please explode. Please explode. It'd be so cool if it exploded. I think this notches it up a temperature thing. Oh no. It's a 2000 now. Well, I'll wait till it gets to 2000. I think. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I've been waiting for like 10 minutes now and it hasn't really gone up much. So, um. There you have it really, I think that's just how you build it. This is a very long video, but it is a tutorial after all. Um yeah, any other questions, ask the com ask me in the comments and I promise I'll answer them. Um and you know, uh They're pretty easy. I see what our centrifuge is doing. It has made one enriched, it just made breeding you in which I'll go into another video. But there you have it guys, that's uh Fishing Reactor. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye. <laughs>